uh, Duku Bokayu. I'm just about to start my tasting. Here's a uh, really nice, hopefully a nice shot of the estate. Very formal, you walk up, make sure your name is on the list. If it's not, you get turned away. As part of the grounds here, we're gonna take a walk over to um, uh, some of the vineyards. You know it's on the uh, water side of the of the river, so you can see it's a fairly windy day today. And these are some of the vineyards of Dikr. So I'm just waiting for another appointment to arrive with me, and uh, we're going to go in. Now you can see some jets probably screaming by. You can hear them. Hopefully we'll get them in the picture. Go ahead. Good. Welcome to Pardon That Vine. My name is Christopher Carbono and this is the world's most unbiased wine you before. And we're at the Crew Bo Caillou with uh, very well-known and well-respected Jeffrey Davies and with Bruno Bordi. So you can't, you know, be with two better people to kind of get a view on the vintage and then talk a little bit about pricing, which I know is uh, what everyone wants to talk about out there. So Bruno, maybe you can tell us a little bit about this wine and the 09 Vintage, kind of what you did and, and what you think of the vintage in general. It's a, it's a vintage that is, uh, we were sort of uh, hesitating or probably we were even pessimistic until uh, mid-September when we had a, a just the right amount of water around the 17th, 18th of, uh, of September. And uh, this rain just put the vines back on, on track and finally uh, gave us this wonderful maturity that we have. The tannins are extremely soft. Uh, we have actually one of the highest uh, tannin contents we, we ever had. But the tannins are very soft, almost sweet, and makes a, a, a good balance because also the acidity is rather present. We have a little more acidity than in the 2005 vintage, but more tannin. The alcohol level is around 13 and a half, so it's a well-balanced wine, pretty good harmony, and uh, well, a charming wine. I call it, uh, I call it the uh, uh, soul vintage, in the sense that it is very voluptuous, probably like a kind of a Beyonce or somebody, you know, not, not a skinny mom, somebody very comfortable, nice, sexy, sensual, voluptuous. Jeff, what do you think? Uh, I think those are all good descriptions. I would tend to agree. Um, certainly the thing that fascinates us as we taste Bruno's wine in this vintage is, is this voluptuous quality because the tannins are totally coated, they are sweet, and it's only when we look at the paper analysis that we realize how much tannin is really there. Tasting the wine, the tannin is totally in the background. Similarly, even though this wine has seen how much you know? 90%. You don't taste it. You don't taste it. It's totally in the background, totally surrounded, if you will, Agreed. by the wonderful fruit in the wine. And finally, the alcohol, which is a little bit higher than usual for the Medoc. It's a, maybe 4% higher on average than the uh, than we used to find it. But there's no hotness. And all of these factors together, I think, give the wine incredible brightness, incredible red berry fruit, uh, wonderful length. And as I smell it, I, I'm reminded of a couple of images from the past. I think a little bit of 70, I think of 61. I think we're going to one of the best possible images that I've seen in a long time. I agree with that. I mean, there are recent images that are outstanding, no question. There's some things about the aromas of the 61 that I, I think are funny. The way you describe the tannins around it is amazing. On the mid palate, you, you're drinking a wine that's approachable. And then the tans are perfectly fitting at the right time. That'll give it longevity, and it's incredible how well it's drinking right this second. It's, I think a lot amazing. of people who are used to uh, or who are weaned on New World wines would have no trouble drinking this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, drinking that. Yes, exactly. It's a uh, it's a tremendous wine. I, uh, that brings me to the next point because people in the United States are going to want to go buy it. That's where you come in, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing some you know rumors that we're talking 30 percent higher than the 05. Is that 
I've heard, I've heard that, I mean, some people are saying the same, and then just recently, a few places I've been today, people are saying there's a... Uh, are they talking about the dollar rate? <laughs> that would be better? <laughs> or, <laughs> probably also. They, this has to come into the picture. I mean, the, uh, apparently, either the dollar is stronger or the, the euro is a little weaker. Uh, yes. But you have to realize also that I, I will let... Uh, no, 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 but I mean, the price is a question of a market, and uh, we are not totally uh, innocent or we are not totally crazy. In other words, um, uh, we come at a price where we think there is a market for it, and if there is no market, we fail. And that happens. So, uh, in other words, what I think is important this year is yes, we have a good vintage, yes, we have, we have uh, buyers that are coming back and that we're not back since 2005 or 2007 vintage uh, but we have to be also very loyal to those uh, customers who have been loyal to us by 2008, 2007, 2006 so we will try to come uh, at a price which will satisfy um, those, this loyalty which will reward this uh, loyalty still on the other hand if there is uh, speculation and etc that's something that neither the merchant nor myself uh, could fight. And, uh, and if we take benefit of it, what you have to realize also, and what makes me so proud of, uh, of this region, and, uh, is the fact that people are really investing in the quality. I mean, most of the money that is made here, there are floats of money that have been made in the recent past, most of the money go back into the wine, improving the vineyards, improving the selections, improving the winemaking. So after all, yes, there is money, but this money is useful to move ahead and make better wines, I think. Jeff, I imagine it's tricky with the 07 being what it was, with the 08 being a very solid vintage and the price is fairly reasonable. Now you have 09, you know, are people going to hold that, buy more 08 if the price is going too high? It seems like it could be a tricky figure out where the right price is. I think that nobody would be surprised if 09 is more expensive than 08 because clearly wine is superior in quality across the board. <clears throat> in many cases, I think it's actually even better than 05. However, the economic situation around the world, the financial situation in which we find ourselves today, is not what it was in 2006 when we had the 2005 futures campaign. So I think smart growers, and certainly I would count Bruno among those, will have to take that fact into account. But that the 09 should be more expensive than the 08s, I don't think will surprise or offend anyone. Because the wines are simply good. How much more than the 08 remains to be seen. But I think it would be mm, very provocative uh, if if properties were to come out at the same or higher prices than they go If the prices in the secondary market go above that, that's not Bruno's fault, that's not my fault. But far, as far as the initial release, I think to come out at 05 prices or higher will really be challenging the market. And I think it would be unfortunate. Well, great. I uh, really appreciate all your time. It's a very nice wine. Tremendous wine. Do I still have one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thank you.